What's going on ladies and gents, boys and girls, guardians of all ages, Joker back again, once again. So, over the course of the next year, Bungie will be removing content that people have paid for from the game. The justification that fans use outside of the ludicrously stupid conflation that this is somehow the exact same thing as Wolves Roaming from the beginning of House of Wolves that came and went, or the Blades of Crota from the beginning of Dark Below that came and went without realizing that those were free, DLC heralding events, not content that people paid for. Often boils down to some form of BUT JOKER! They need to do it because of tech issues on Bungie's side, or they need to do it because of tech issues on our side. Not only is this often used explanation at best misquoted, but at worst, it's misunderstood. And it's not even the reason Bungie themselves gave for the retiring of content. So let's buckle up, dive in, and go to the original quote that this argument has been created from, an interview with Polygon. Polygon later asked Bungie about more returning planets from the original Destiny. Noseworthy and Smith didn't refute any possibilities, but said there are technical limitations to adding more and more to Destiny 2 the studio has to pick their battles. This seems to be where people stopped reading, likely because they didn't read the article and are going off of what's been reported by various YouTubers. But what this says to me is either A, the studio can add a bunch of old content, or B, add new content, and that they have to pick their battles when it comes to this. But the article does go on. Destiny 2 is a huge game, said Noseworthy. We mean that in terms of the scope of the game, that complexity, but also just the amount of space we take up on people's hard drives. Noseworthy went on to say that Bungie can't really just grow the game indefinitely forever. Now, these are all legitimate arguments as to why the studio in the future will be moving to a Destiny 3 platform instead of continuing the Destiny 2 platform. As the context of the conversation isn't around small singular events, but planets. Large sprawling locations with AI simulation, public events, strikes, patrols, not adding more planets? I actually get. But when we talk about things like removing Vex Offensive, which looks to be the Vex equivalent of Escalation Protocol, we're comparing a glass of water with an ocean. And that same mentality applies to the hard drive space. The amount of space that Bungie will be saving by gutting Vex EP is, to abuse the water analogy again, like a drop of water in an ocean. There's also this idea running around, and it's because of the placeholder for Shadowkeep, that with Shadowkeep, Destiny 2 will somehow, magically, balloon to 165 gigs. When Forsaken was being released, the placeholder for Forsaken was over 100 gigs. Destiny 2, at least on Xbox, currently is only 88.9 gigs. And this is after the Season Pass DLC, and every update, every patch, every buff, every nerf, every free event, every weapon, every piece of dialogue, every cinematic added over the last year. To say that Forsaken in and of itself didn't take Destiny anywhere close to that 100 gig placeholder would be an understatement. Destiny 2, after year one, with all the DLC, all the patches, all the updates, everything that was added in year one, with Forsaken, was only 77 gigabytes. If we, for the sake of argument, say that that 165 gig placeholder is accurate, that would make Shadowkeep 77 gigs. That would make Shadowkeep just as large as Destiny 2. All of Destiny 2's year one DLC, updates, patches, free events, and Forsaken combined. Yeah, that's not happening. You know why? Because we already know Shadowkeep is a Rise of Iron sized DLC. And while it might be slightly bigger than Rise of Iron, given Destiny New Light and Armor 2.0, there's no way in hell it's going to be bigger than Destiny 2, Destiny 2 Year 1, and Forsaken combined. We also know that all of the content added to Destiny 2 since Forsaken in the last year amounts to 11 gigs. Which, by that point, our hypothetical 11 gigs coming and going isn't going to change much over the next year. And just to put that into perspective, that hypothetical 11 gigs largely isn't going anywhere anyways. Because that 11 gigs wasn't just the Forges, it wasn't just Gambit Prime, it wasn't just the Reckoning, it wasn't just the Menagerie. It was every buff, nerf, hotfix, sound effect, piece of dialogue, piece of text, weapon, piece of armor, cinematic, location, added over the course of the last year. How much, hypothetically, do you honestly think removing the Forges, Reckoning, or the Menagerie would have shaved off of all of that. Not much. Same thing goes for the Vex incursions. At the end of the day, Bungie removing these activities 
maybe will shave off a couple of gigs over the course of the next year. And if Bungie really, really cared about saving space, they would allow us to remove all the language options that we don't use. There's quite literally a couple dozen gigs of information taking up everybody's hard drive space for language options that nobody uses. If you're playing in German right now, what are the odds you're going to change your language to Japanese? If you're playing in Japanese right now, what are the odds you're going to change your language to French? If you're playing in English, how likely are you to change your language to Chinese? If you're playing in Chinese, how likely are you to change your language to Spanish? If you're playing in Spanish, how likely are you to change your language to Korean? And so on and so forth. Basically, if Bungie let us uninstall all the languages we don't use, with the option to reinstall them later if we so choose to, then we would save so much hard drive space. But I digress. As I was saying, at the end of the day, by removing these activities, Bungie is shaving off maybe, over the course of the next year, at best, a couple of gigs. And in all honesty, I doubt they'll actually go through the trouble of removing these activities from the code, as you don't play Jenga with stable code. This is why, for example, instead of overwriting the current armor system, it will continue to exist next to armor 2.0. It's why you can still get year one weapons and armor. It's just far easier to leave them in the code and do nothing more than disable it, like faction rallies or trials, than it is to completely remove it. Because anytime you start adding or removing something from the game, or doing both at the same time, like this proposes to do, you're asking for bugs, for glitches, for things to break. Again, never play Django with stable code. This goes back to the old adage, 99 bugs in the code, 99 bugs in the code, take one down, patch it around, 999 bugs in the code. If you think patching a bug has unforeseen consequences, what kind of consequences does adding code or removing it have. More so when large portions of that code will still have to be in the game. Things in code tend to be tied to other things rather unexpectedly. Anyone who's spent more than five minutes in RPG Maker knows this. And yes, there are other arguments about how content libraries work and other bungee and hypothetical technical limitations. That's not what's being talked about in this article. And anything past this article and Bungie's actual stated reason for removing the content is all baseless speculation and nothing more. And you heard me right, Bungie has actually stated why they're removing the content. And it has absolutely nothing to do with content libraries, file sizes, or even the price of tea in China, and everything to do with their vision of an ever-evolving world. Quote, With each new season in Destiny, we want players to feel like they, as a community, are contributing to Destiny's evolving world. Keyword there, evolving. Each season in Destiny has to ride the line between delivering self-contained, season-long world arcs and making the handoff to the next season. Together, seasons move the Destiny universe forward. In Season of the Undying, the portal to the Black Garden that was opened as part of the Jacket Quest has awoken the Vex, and they are now pouring out across the surface of the moon. Working with Ikora, players will do some stuff, go somewhere, fight some things, solve a problem, aka Redacted. Yet something remains. This will be just in time for Redacted to kick off the start of Season 9, Season of Dawn. Yeah, that really sounds like they're hurting for space. Changing the world's state, leaving things behind, progressing the state of the world. That's not what you do when you only have a couple of gigs left to play with. The vision that Bungie is presenting is of an ever-evolving world. It's also one with a lot of seasonal content that they'll no longer have to worry about trying to keep relevant. This is why artifact perks exist. So they have a test bed for perks and if they wind up unbalanced, well, they just don't have to bring them back. Nor do they have to worry about balancing them. If everything ends and resets and changes at the end of each season, none of this is really a consideration anymore. And the effect of power creep lessens. And logically speaking, I don't see Bungie devising a convoluted system to curb power creep, which will inevitably cause more dev time as they add and remove content. While praying, nothing breaks, but I digress. With things being timed the way they are, it also creates a sense of urgency to engage with the content. To use Reckoning as a hypothetical example, say I want a god rolled spare rations or last man standing, but I only have three months to get them. The current fastest way is to farm tier 2 Reckoning, before the weapons are removed from the game for an indefinite amount of time and someday added back to the loot pool. In tier 2 Reckoning, currently my odds of seeing what I'm looking for drop is 1 out of 3 every time I get a drop. In the future, however, it'll be 1 out of however many other items are in the loot pool that these weapons are added to. The time limit encourages me to engage with content in a way that I might not have 
had the content always been there. It also implies that Bungie got everything right on the first try. For example, Reckoning's loot has been terrible since it released, and we're just now seeing a Reckoning loot buff? We're technically speaking what, a week, maybe a little bit more, from when Shadowkeep was originally intended to release? It took them this long to fix the loot for Reckoning? That's like two seasons later. The season Reckoning was released in, and then the season of Opulence, and then season of Undying, and just before Season of Undying, it finally gets fixed? I don't know about you, but that's not a resounding vote of confidence that Bungie will be able to address and fix issues that rise up during seasonal DLC releases. And this isn't like hunting down a bug and making sure that patching it doesn't break anything else. This isn't like fixing a network error like the guitar network error, which took, what, three to six months to fix in the last Wish raid? This was literally just adjusting the drop rate values for Reckoning weapons. And it took them two seasons to do it, outside of glitches, bugs, and just really, really bad loot drop rates, that we are trusting Bungie to have all in order before they ship this seasonal content, which, need I remind anyone, Bungie has not shipped a piece of content without issue. What this also does is severely punish anybody who is either late to buy the DLC or doesn't have a lot of time to play it. It's also kind of a shit way to try to incentivize players to move on and buy the next piece of DLC by taking away what they still might be grinding through. It also creates this weird space where Bungie's not incentivized to create amazing content, and we're not incentivized to grow attached to any piece of content because it'll just be gone in three months. I mean, prime example of this. I'm not a huge fan of Gambit. I didn't think a lot of people were, but when they announced that they were gonna get rid of one of the Gambit modes eventually, people were like, whoa, 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 whoa. I like Gambit Prime, or I like Classic Gambit. The same thing goes for Trials. People have been wanting Trials back since it left, for a mode that was allegedly unpopular. Pro tip Bungie, the numbers in Trials didn't decrease because people didn't like playing Trials. The numbers in Destiny decreased because people didn't like playing Destiny 2 Year 1. But now, everything's gonna be even more disposable than it was before, quite literally. I mean, why waste time and effort to try to create new and amazing content? to flesh out the world of Destiny when it's just going to be gone in three months anyways. And why bother anyways when you can just save that content for Destiny 3? So what's the point? What's the point of playing or experiencing any of this content if it's just going to be okay? If it's just going to waste time between now and Destiny 3 whenever that comes out? Overall, I just don't think that this is the right way for Bungie to proceed. There is a way to continue to grow the world without removing content. More so, content that people are paying for. If they just wanted to give this to players and just be like, hey, we're gonna be removing it in three months, that would be one thing. But people are paying for this. We saw with Rise of Iron that Bungie is more than capable of updating content without removing content. But even if Bungie doesn't want to go to the extreme and redo entire areas, which is completely understandable, simply better planning on their part as to the type of content that they're making with clear narrative growth that goes from point A to point B to point C. For example, if the Vex are doing A and we do B in retaliation, then what's their C move and what's our D move? And what are the points of cause and effect that can take the world state from its current place to where it needs to be at the beginning of Destiny 3. Bungie can show the evolution of the world by telling better stories in it. But I guess just removing, or what's more likely to happen, just turning off content that people have paid for is the easier way to do it. It's easier than telling a good and effective story. That would be hard. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. And like always, stay frosty.